Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Gemini for October 2018. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, to see the massive amount of free resources I have there. And if you'd love to book a live reading with me, I'm off of my long sabbatical from taking on new clients. So you can book a reading at AnnieHelpsYou.com. So what is going on in the month of October? We've got Venus Retrograde as our main highlight. We've had a few months where we've had a lot of different things going on and now we have like just kind of honed in focus on this energy of Venus retrograde. But Venus covers a lot of ground. So this is still going to cover a lot of areas of life and I'm gonna go into all of this. So Venus rules, love, beauty, design, finance, money, business, and that's a lot. <laughs> So because it covers, it's so pervasive in so many areas of our lives, I've made a massive amount of resources for you because although the transit is only about six weeks, like from October 5th through November 15th, there's a shadow period on either side for a month. So from September 4th through the middle of December, we're covered in this Venus retrograde energy. And there are lots of rules, there are caveats, and there are definitely things that you need to know involving all these areas, okay? So I'm not gonna be able to fit all this in in this video. My main intention for this video is to let you know which houses are going to be aspected by Venus retrograde for Gemini. So Venus is gonna be going retrograde in which houses for each of the Gemini placements. And what kind of questions and what kind of topics and what kind of specific Venus retrograde things will come up there. But there's so much more information I've created for you, so you definitely wanna search for Annie Botticelli Venus Retrograde, watch my video on YouTube that's specific for this, look at my do's and don'ts, Venus Retrograde do's and don'ts blog at AnnieHelpsYou.com because they're so comprehensive. I've also made a 12-part blog series where you can read about um, Venus Retrograde through the sixth house and the fifth house, which are the ones that are aspected for Gemini. You can also read about Venus retrograde in Scorpio and Libra because those are the signs that will be retrograding for everyone and that will affect you. Okay, so to do a very comprehensive job, you have to, I have to refer you to these other places, but we're gonna cover a lot of ground here. So in general, retrogrades are not time for new things. They are time to question, reassess, reconsider, bring things back from the past, reap rewards from things done in the past, have things come back from the past that had been lost or just in the past that we want in the present. It's a focus on the past rather than um, new things, okay? So anything that you have to do in any of these areas of life, love, money, beauty, anything, retro, things from the past, clients from the past, people from the past, or your current relationship, but things you used to do in the past, you know, that's the kind of stuff you wanna bring back in. That's going to serve you better than trying to do too much new stuff. So it's not as good for dating new people. It's not as good for trying to launch a new business. Those are, you know, the things that are kind of, I don't want to say no-nos, but they, but they kind of are. So you want to watch that and you want to educate yourself about this. So in general, it's not a time to make life-changing decisions about love and beauty and money. So you don't wanna do something drastic to your body, to your appearance, to your wardrobe, to your design of your house, design a new house, major decisions in love, major decisions in money. Those are the things that you wanna wait until after this reconsideration process to, to do. So like the end of December into January, if you are thinking you wanna do something in those areas, this process is a good time to reconsider everything, to assess it, to make some plans even, but not to necessarily do it because people aren't seeing clearly in these areas and you don't wanna make big decisions when you're not seeing clearly. It's a time to be the earthworm. You basically wanna keep working over old ground to make your um, dirt nice and fertile for your new growth. Okay, so in general, okay, so what I'm about to describe is the houses that are being highlighted for Venus retrograde for the different Gemini placements. But I don't want you to tune out if I'm not talking about your division of Gemini because even if you're not having Venus retrograde in the segment I'm talking about, both of these houses are aspected strongly for Gemini, the sixth and fifth house. So any of the things that are brought up here can be relevant for any Gemini, okay? It just might not be because it's Venus retrograde there. So 
sixth house things, sixth house rules. So it, really the first half of Gemini is going to have this either entirely in the sixth house or partly in the sixth house. The second half of Gemini, so like the second two weeks of the birthday, um, the 15 degrees to 29 for rising sign, you are going to have the energy in the fifth house for from the Venus retrograde standpoint. So for the first half, and then, like I said, could also be related to the later Geminis, but for different reasons. The sixth house rules pets, health, medicine, diet, lifestyle, diagnostics, procedures, treatments, your daily work environment, self-employment, how you get things done, your organizational system, your supplements, etc. So <clears throat> retrograde here can bring you back to something that was coming up from the past, things you spent money on in the past, things that you know you put any energy into in the past could come back. So a modality that you used from the past could come back and work really well for you. You might redo labs um, and it might find different results. If there's work stuff, there could be dramas or benefits from the past. So you could be considered for a position that you had been considered for before and you didn't get it and it could come back. You know, So basically anything unresolved in these areas can come up very strongly or blessings from past work could come to fruition very strongly or things that you have not focused on in these areas of life could come up for you to be dealt with. You know, when there's a retrograde, it's like somebody th picks up a, the, the, the rug that we swept everything under and then everything is just kind of flying around. So anything in those areas of life, you know, um, questions in the workplace, self-employment methods, Great opportunities can come in at this time. You know, if you're doing marketing efforts, it's better to try to sell to your, your people from the past rather than try to spend too much time on building new clientele. Not to say you won't slip a new person in here or there, it's just, you know, the energy is more about the past. You may be, um, if you have to find a solution to a problem at work or with business, a tried and true principle might serve you better than like a new idea. Something with pets could surface from the past. Maybe they could need some attention. They could, you know, a pet could come back from the past, anything like that. Or for instance, like I had a situation in Venus retrograde where, you know, so like business, business involving pets, making money involving pets could come back up from the past. So in this one Venus retrograde, I had this idea, which I had had many times before, that I should start a pet sitting business because I love animals. I'm a freaky animal person and anybody who would have me watch their pets would be super lucky and super stoked because I'm just crazy about them and attentive. Very, very attentive. So it was Venus retrograde and I know being an astrologer that starting a business in Venus retrograde is not the best idea. but there were caveats and see these are the things that it's important to learn i didn't want to put all my eggs in the in the pet sitting basket i knew that wasn't what i wanted to do full time i knew i didn't want it to get too big i knew i only had you know i only wanted to do so much with it and i had done things like that before like it wasn't a brand new idea to me or a brand new experience for me and the stakes were low i didn't have to put any money into it so that's you know the, one of the caveats. So if, if you have something like that come up, you don't have to put money into it, the stakes are low, you could try it on, say, hey, yeah, I'm doing this now. It can serve you, and it did. It served me for about six months, and then some of the other things I do took front and center stage, and I didn't do it anymore, and it was perfect, and it was exactly what I wanted and needed at that time. So you might see something like that. you know. So if you have are in a business related to anything else that I mentioned, health, diet, supplementation, nutrition, um, you know, alternative medicine, mainstream medicine, yoga, meditation, anything, you know, selling supplements or in that, any kind of health related things or pharmaceuticals. There may be things from the past that, that come up around that, or your idea to get into those fields may come up and you may try to get some education. If you're gonna do education, it could be totally fine as long as it's not too expensive, the commitment isn't too long, <clears throat> or it doesn't matter. Like if you have the money to do it and you spend it and you change your mind, it doesn't matter. You know, that's what I mean about these low stakes things. If you have the money and it doesn't matter, then don't worry about it. It's when it would be a big deal for you and it's a, you know, 
it's hard to part with the money or something like that. Short-term ventures can be totally fine to implement during the retrogrades as long as a lot of money or resources or risk is not involved. Money owed to you from past work could come in at this time. Bonuses from past work could show up. Recognition, raises, or clients from the past could show up. When it comes to asking for a raise, you may have more luck when Venus is in full power, but definitely follow your flow. Something you asked for before may show up now. So you can feel into your specific situation. Issues or dissatisfaction with how you make money, your income level, your workplace dynamics are very likely to come up or escalate at this time. So if it's been a theme that's been present, you know, it might come to a head. It's not generally advisable to quit a job under this transit because your emotions can get the better of you and could bring long-term consequences. If, you know, it's a very good time to start researching your escape plan, plan B, but, you know, and, and again, go to ideas and connections from the past and things like that. Sometimes love from the past that was related to work could come back. If you, you know, had dated somebody, they could show up back at your office again. And it's a fine time to try that back on again, but try to not, try to do it in a low stakes, low commitment way because it's, you're not seeing clearly. So it may seem like it's all rosy, but by the end of the transit, the same old stuff could be coming up. Also, sometimes the return of a love interest, like things that you do every day, like someone you see at the grocery store all the time or someone you see at yoga all the time, you know, love related to things that you do every day could come up. A nagging health symptom could get stronger and you might have to put some money on, you know, like dealing with this. Again, like if you have to, if it's an emergency and you have to commit, spend the money. If it's going to be expensive and you're not sure and you're okay not doing it yet, spending a bunch of money now may or may not, you know, if it's not an emergency, just spending a lot of money now, you just have to be really careful with that. But definitely check out anything involving your health because this is a health house. So if you learn the options about um, coverage that you're already paying for, you may find some things that you could be utilizing that you've been paying for that you haven't had. So different kinds of modalities, there are more and more modalities showing up on insurance, things like that can be really um, surprising, positive surprises. So some questions that you can proactively ask or ones that will likely come up even if you're not asking. Do I love my job? What can you do better to have a better work experience in the future? What are some ideas for plan B? How can you leverage your past accomplishments in connection with, you know, connections to boost your current income and improve, you know, improve your work life? How can you, um, oh, do you have nagging health symptoms that are begging for attention? How can resources that you have available help to investigate these? Do you need a new health regimen or diet regimen? What support options are there? And does your pet need some attention? So. I have all of these questions plus more things on this topic of the sixth house, including additional resources and things that I recommend for this time in that blog, um, Venus Retrograde Through the Sixth House um, on AnnieHelpsYou.com. My affirmation for Venus Retrograde Through the Sixth House or any energy in the sixth house, which all Gemini placements have, is I easily create and maintain an effective and fulfilling routine. Okay, so let's hit this fifth house. Um, the fifth house is where the second half of Gemini will be experiencing this. Again, you guys in the middle, you're gonna have it in both houses, fifth and sixth. And you guys at the beginning, you might have some of these questions or topics come up, but it won't be related to Venus retrograde per se in that house. It could be related to something else that's working through that sector of your chart. So the fifth house rules children, creative projects, hobbies, anything having to do with the creation, conception, childbearing, child rearing, or a creative project being the baby. You know, so the conception of a project, the creation of the project, the, the babying of the project, and the stewarding of the project, anything like that. So things with children could come up. Um, sometimes a child needs attention or new information is needed for you to have a successful pregnancy. Creative projects that fell in the backdrop are very commonly coming back in. So again, like rather than a new project, old projects, clearing up old things to give you, um, first of all, completion, but also because you can do something with them and then it clears up your space for, for new things in the future. 
sometimes a love relationship cools off in the retrograde, okay? So if the relationship is of substance and value, it will make it through the Venus retrograde. If it's not, you know, it won't, but it's a great time to try to work things out at least. And often romance comes back from the past when Venus is in retrograde. So a love from the past can come back. If you're separated from your love, you may be back in you know, connection with them or physical space with them. And also um, anything having to do with um, romance or love just in general coming back from the past. Okay, so if you had issues with addictions those could come up to be addressed and you might have to deal with repercussions from having too much fun in a way that wasn't good for you. So those things could come up. So basic questions to ask at this time, how can I have more fun in my life? Am I having too much fun? <laughs> Are there certain things that you're doing that aren't helping you? What lessons from past, present um, romantic relationships do you have to learn and are showing up for you to work with? How has the past, have past decisions negatively affected you and how can you rectify that now? And then just in general, counseling and doing things to return magic to current relationships is very powerful and effective now. Things that you had fun with like hobbies and stuff in the past are amazing to bring back now. And you could also consider making money with them because Venus is involved with money. So hobbies could become money, thinking about making money from hobbies, all of those things can come back in a big way. So those are the things most on my mind for Gemini now. I wanna talk about some additional things to consider for this month, including some sweet spots and some bumps to be aware of, some jolty um, aspects in those dates. So we're gonna go into all that now. So I'm calling the theme of October 2018 for all signs, Venus retrograde on the positive tip. We've already talked about what Venus retrograde in the house that it's retrograde for your sign can look like for you and some strategies to best utilize that. And now I wanna give you some general things, especially some positive things, but also with a few cautionary notes. And just a reminder that really you have to go watch my Venus retrograde video, Annie Botticelli Venus retrograde, and definitely look at the written version in my blog at AnnieHelpsYou.com because there's so much to know about this transit. It's so long, it's from, October 5th through November 15th as the actual retrograde, but a month before and a month after is the shadow period when we're going to still, these rules will apply. So one of the best things that Venus retrograde is amazing for is working on self-esteem. Everything that Venus rules, love, beauty, design, money, comes back to this energy of relationship with self. So our relationship with money and business, our relationship with other people, our relationship with how we feel like we look, all has to do with our self-esteem. So that's why in general it's not favored to try to push out in any of these other arenas because it's really a time to locate and clear issues that are holding you back from the inside. So inner work, prayer, meditation, affirmation, you know, anything where you can heal, from trauma and anything that's negatively affecting your self-esteem is amazing for this time. Something else that's amazing for this time is to look to the past for improvements for love and money. Okay, so that means like if you did something with your partner in the past that worked really well, or if in general, you know, your you did certain things with your love life in the past that worked really well. There, there could be like a renaissance, a returning back to things that worked really well. Many people who are separated from their love will have them come back to them in Venus retrograde. Um, if there's someone that you're, you left off with and you're not sure about, sometimes they come knocking again in Venus retrograde. And it's a really amazing time to reconsider things. It's just an assess. It's just not the best time to commit to anything that you're figuring out from the assessments. Something that Venus retrograde is amazing for is for treasure hunters. If you are looking for a deal on something, unfortunately, this is coming from the fact that many people are not seeing clearly in money and they're selling things of value for emotional reasons at crazy low prices. So if you have money to spare, you could wind up picking up an amazing deal. It's just a, a treasure hunter's delight. Definitely be careful though because it could also, something you buy could become a money pit. So you have to make sure that you're getting a really great deal and that like if it's a house or something, you really need to do as many inspections as possible and just make sure you're, you know you have all your bases covered, you know, um, extra inspections like sewage, septic, you know, whatever 
everything that you can do to make sure that you know that what you're buying isn't going to have any negative surprises, then it could turn out really well. You just have to look out for that. So in general, going back to the past for love, going back to the past for money and business, things that worked in the past with money, clients from the past, um, if you do something like you teach or offer something regularly, sometimes in a Venus retrograde, you'll have a bunch of people from the past who had been considering taking this offering might come out in full force. And of course it could happen the other way. You know, a lot of people do have financial issues like financial backlog where they have trouble with their finances. And then that's going to point to healing some inner issues that are causing these reflections or the lack of stability. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some, hit some sweet spots and hit some challenging spots in the month. Remember, definitely go to anniehelpsyou.com, sign up for my free email newsletter, because there I give you a write-up of this general transit in more detail with lots of dates of actual aspects, what the aspects are and what to look out for for each aspect so that you can plan ahead. I always send these out a month early. And if you are signed up for my newsletter and you're not getting these, I'm definitely sending them. I always send them meticulously on time. So you definitely check for like your spam promotions or social folders, uh, because if you're not getting in the inbox, they're going there. And then you can just uh, move it over to your inbox or whitelist the email on there to get them in there. Okay. so. Let's just do a quick review of some sweet spots. Um, well, actually, let's do the challenging ones first, okay? So we've got things to look out for on October 2nd, 5th, 8th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 23rd, 24th, and 31st, with extra emphasis on those ones towards the end of the month, um, the 24th and the 31st. Now, it's interesting because in general, the second half of the month has a lot better flow and sweet energy, with the exception of those two spots. Okay, those are oppositions with Uranus that can bring jolts and surprises. That could be challenging. So just kind of tread lightly around those days. And then the other ones that I listed, you could see some challenges. Always look out around the full moon, which is like the 24th, because you know there could be drama or there could be fulfillment, um, completion or fruition. And that's going to be in these energies of Taurus. So fullness, completion, drama, fruition coming to things involving money and business and self-worth. There's a topic coming up again, sensual delights, material resources, environmental and sustainability projects, boundaries, resistance to change, things like that. Oh, and anything having to do with your throat, vocal cords, thyroid gland, etc., cetera, could, could bring things to light um, or bring things up to be dealt with. Okay, so I wanna end off talking about the sweet spots. We've got some of the days that could turn out to be challenging could also turn out to be super sweet. So you'll hear when I list the sweet vibe days and always remember when I give you these dates, we could feel the energies before or after the actual date because there's an orb of energy around each transit. So don't stick too heavily to the dates, just kind of tune in to how you are, are experiencing the energy. So sweet spot possibilities on the 5th, the 8th, the 15th, the 19th the 22nd, the 24th, the 26th, the 27th, and the 29th. In general, the second half of the month, like I said, has a lot of sweetness, um, with the exception of the 23rd, 24th, and the 31st, some things to look out for. But there's some really awesome things going on, like October 22nd, Mercury is making a beautiful aspect to Pluto, so your powers of persuasion are improved and your powers of perception are improved. Then there's also this October 27th with the sun in Scorpio making an amazing aspect to Saturn. So this is a great energy to get things done and also an enhanced possibility of being seen or acknowledged by somebody in a position that you want to notice you. So it could be like someone in your family that you've always been kind of chasing their approval or it could be somebody you know in the work world. October 29th, there's this mixed bag, but it really has potential for a lot of good news and good luck. Mercury and Jupiter get together. So whenever any of these personal planets get together with Jupiter, the, the energy of luck you know, amplifies out and Mercury rules news. So some good news about money, about um, something involving your partner, it could be money from your partner, it could be your own money. Lots of magical potentials here. Of course, it could also bring intensity to conversations, you know, in the Scorpio realms or something like that. But in general, I'm looking for that day, hopefully to have some 
some good vibes. So overall, this month of October, some little awkward spots, and definitely the Venus retrograde is going to have this shadow, but if you understand the energies, as you will if you use all of the many resources that I made for you, then I think that this can be um, a really sweet month. And for the things that are challenging, you could really have pure alchemy to turn the lead to gold. So go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, sign up for my free email newsletter. You can also see more about my personal live readings, which I'm off sabbatical and I'm taking live, um, taking new clients now. If you've been wanting to have a reading and have me look at your chart. Also, if you would love to learn astrology, check out my astrology apprenticeship program. I also have all kinds of other goodies on my website. If you want written horoscopes from me, they go into often different things than I focus on in the reports. So it's a really good written highlight and summary and includes great reads for each sign. So cozy by sweetstarlight.com. And if you're a traveler and you want to see my astrology travel reports to see what days to look out for specifically for travel, then check out Astrology Kissed Travel Bliss. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.